Well, when I first bought the property 12 years ago, this whole area was used for um, cutting hay annually. And so the creek was also, there was stock here as well. So cattle would come down into the creek and graze it out completely. Since then, we fenced off the creek and done extensive revegetation. And thanks to the NRM board, there's been a creek crossing put in and some erosion control has taken place in a couple of points along the creek line. Well, we're hoping to keep the um, biodiversity increasing through this area. That we're bordered by um, National Park up through here. There's the um, Ingalala Falls just nearby. And so we've got quite a lot of wildlife that comes through and we just want to keep that encouraged. That this is quite, as I say, a fast flowing creek that during winter, the water levels can be up as high as I am. Right. And um, so the water comes through quite quickly. Yeah. That so it hits this bank and the work that's going to be undertaken today is re-armoring this bank to try and halt that erosion control. Hello, my name's Rod Dowie. I'm the principal consultant with Farmscape Consulting. And we're just at a site uh, in Hay Flat out of Yankalilla. And looking over here, um, you can see the exposed bank. Uh, it's just currently eroding, has been eroding for quite some time. Um, it's really the result of uh, initially from clearing of the landscape. There was traditionally these areas would have been much more braided streams uh, with tea tree and and so on. So when you had high water flows, it would tend to spread out across these flats. Um, with the clearance and uh, agriculture coming into these areas, it tends to make streams uh, much more incised, deeper in the landscape. That's what's been happening. And so you get these uh, erosion areas. And as you can see, the soil's pretty much completely exposed. This area here will continue to erode as the water comes down the creek. And, and gouges its way around the corner here. And as you can also see with these tree roots that um, uh, having you know, gum trees and so on doesn't stop what's gonna happen. Um, it's just, the roots are too coarse, they really don't hold it together to any extent. And once that area is exposed, uh, it will continue to erode. And so it is a real problem. And uh, of course, once that material's eroded, it doesn't stay here, it goes downstream and you can have siltation problems further downstream. And so by addressing this, um, it'll actually enable re revegetation to take place. You can't revegetate a bank that looks like that. In a case like this, it's a matter of battering these banks uh, using stone and rock. With this particular situation, we're gonna be putting in some grade control structures, which are really like rock weirs, which pond the water um, you know, to the top side of the of the structure that allows for some sedimentation to occur and then the colonisation of reeds and rushes. Uh, so just begun the process, um, the bank has already been battered. This was quite steep before, so I battered it to about a one in three slope. And as you can see, the first load of rock has gone in here. Um, so it's keyed into the, into the bank really just by bashing it in with the, with the excavator. Um, so once the rock's in, the structure's in, then enables the, um, the water flow here to, to pull behind the structure, uh, allow the sedimentation and there'll be a trailing edge here as well. And then the, these banks will be treated with some uh, seed, uh, rye corn, just to get immediate growth, and uh, also some erosion control matting, and then we'll plug some seedlings into that. To achieve um, restoration of these environments, it, it really is a partnership and between the landowner, um, the NRM board, uh, the contractor, uh, and myself, who, who coordinates um, the work here and oversees it. Although the work we've shown here today is fairly localised and at a small scale, it will improve the health of the downstream watercourse and benefit biodiversity. 
As a result of the work here today, the amount of sediment that flows downstream will, will be reduced, as will the impacts on downstream users and infrastructure. Before you start any work in a watercourse, you need to be aware that what you are doing there might have implications on the downstream health of the waterway, so it's important to seek the necessary approvals. If you contact your local natural resource centre and inquire about the water affecting activity process, you'll find all the necessary information.